Alright, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are back with some more Assassin's Creed 2. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this session is not a uh, broken, uh, jumbled mess of an experience like uh, like uh, last Monday's Assassin's Creed 2 session was. Because um, during that session, I booted up the game and I found out that I had left my game running uh, like, basically the entire time, uh, in a, like, suspended state, mind you, uh, but it was still running to a degree that the game, like, really just struggled, um, to, like, keep up with things. Like, I was killing guards and their legs were bending backwards, um, there were a lot of texture, uh, kind of discrepancies, um, stuff like that. And uh, it was so funny, because, like, the previous stream I had talked about, uh, there was this Polygon article and uh, video that they put out, and it really, really hammered on uh, the Ezio collection uh, as being, like, kind of half-assed, kind of port, stuff like that. And um, I uh, I said, no, you know, Polygon, they I think they took, you know, kind of fringe cases and uh, blew it out of proportion. And... Um, no, I think I, I might have perhaps defended the game a little too too strongly. Um, I still think they did. Uh, but uh, we'll see how many um, kind of graphical uh, glitches we see. But already, right away. Um, hi, Keo! How you doing today? Uh, we're playing some Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, might be wrapping it up today. I'm not 100% sure. But um, one of the things immediately that uh, is sticking out, whenever I highlight the guards here, uh, they, uh, ooh, eating your lunch. I just finished my lunch uh, about an hour ago. It was pretty good. Um, I went to a local uh, restaurant here in town. What else would a local restaurant be? <laughs> um, but uh, I went to a local place, and um, they've got a burger called the Terminator. Uh, oh, hi. Um, they got a burger called the Terminator, and, um, it's got, uh, bacon, jalapeno, uh, diced onion, um, and then, of course, you can have tomato, lettuce, pickle, if you want. I am a, I detest pickle, uh, and then I'm not, I'm not really that big on tomato or onion, um, and then, uh, but also you get, like, you can add a fried egg, so I add a fried egg to mine, um, because, uh, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for, uh, oh, is someone else up here? Hi. I'll take care of you. Um, anyway, uh, I'm a big advocate for... So it begins. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big advocate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big advocate for, um, fried egg on my burger. Uh, like, it's so, so good. Um, I was a, I was a changed man once I had a... A fried egg on, on one of my one of my burgers. <laughs> that was a that was a roller coaster of events. There we stabbed the guy. Uh, the game like slid us off the building, and um, and then we we swan dove into the the water below. <laughs> it was not a was not expecting that. Um, trying to remember how to even get in here. Uh, if I had to guess, it's going to be that bridge right there. So let me jump back into the water. And uh, we'll get over on that bridge. Um, never heard of uh, egg on burger. Uh, next time you get a burger, if uh, if you're big on egg, uh, ask for a fried egg if it's an option. If you see it on the menu, uh, like add fried egg for a dollar or whatever, go for it. It's um, it's good stuff. Uh, a lot of places do like uh, kind of a hangover burger, and um, usually it'll have a fried egg on it. Yeah, it's it's the bomb. Um, but yeah, I will, I will always, like, recommend putting a fried egg on your burger. And then uh, another thing that I like to do, whenever I make grilled cheese now, um, I put a fried egg on that. Or if I make a ham and cheese uh, sandwich, I'll put a fried egg on that. Look, eggs are good. <laughs> so, um, so, so people need to eat them more. I'm sorry for the loss of your brother. He had it coming. He was bought and paid for by the Borgia. A mistake I have no intention of making. Come, Ezio. 
We have much to oh, and then uh, with the burger at um, Tater Sticks are basically big. Uh, some places call them like JoJo's, uh, but it's basically a big potato wedge. You mean occupied and joined by 200 merchants? I like bold eggs and my ramen. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. That's understandable. Uh, I like to to make omelets. Um, in the mornings, I'll, I'll sometimes make an omelet for my breakfast, and I'll stuff it with like ham, cheese, uh, parsley, whatever. Um, good, good shit. Uh, and then uh. Also, like, of course, scrambled eggs. Uh, I like eggs. I don't remember this mission at all. Uh, whenever we killed the guy at the Carnival uh, little area, I thought we were pretty much done. Um, so we got another, got another mission here. Oh, yeah, we got to kill Silvio Barbari Barbarigo. <laughs> forgot all about him um now i feel like maybe he's our last target did we no we haven't killed um i think his name's dante his uh his conspirator kind of friend who uh hangs out with him let me go over to yeah dante moro we haven't killed dante moro uh, so we still have silvio and dante and then after that it's all rodrigo borgia Cool. Okay, so yeah, we got like three targets. I would say maybe three to five missions remaining. Hey, you come back here. Nah, you back here. I want your cash. I'm loaded, but I want it. Gimme, gimme, gimme. What the hell? Come here. Where are you going? Stop it. Why are you running? Get back here. I like how even he's chasing them. Like, huh? They don't know who to go after. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Ezio just like slammed his face into that gondola. That is uh that is some missing teeth right there. Yeah, that's uh that hurt. <laughs> um <laughs> Also, we got an ad break coming up in like 30 seconds. <laughs> nope, not today. Not in the mood. Just tackled that man. I love Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, it feels a little bit janky, but not as janky as um, like the previous session. And I think most of the jank so far is just from uh, from me being a bit of a goober with the uh, with the controls and everything. So I don't think it's, um, like, unintentional jank, ladies. Because uh, as, as much as, like, I, I like to think in my head, you know, oh, Assassin's Creed 2 had this wonderful, flawless uh, parkour system. Nah. Nah. Uh-uh. No, it didn't. <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely my rose-tinted glasses, as I've uh, come to find. And I'm wondering if the the same kind of um, sentiment, the rose-tinted glassesness of it, will uh, will apply to um, uh, Brotherhood and Revelations, because those games I do feel like did improve upon the uh, the parkour engine like ever so slightly. And then, uh, like, I know for a fact Assassin's Creed 3 made some pretty, pretty solid and significant changes. Um, one of my favorite things about Assassin's Creed 3, and, uh, honestly, it's one of the ones I'm most looking forward to playing again, um, just because I love Connor. Uh, but, uh, the, uh, the thing I'm looking forward to with it is, um, like, seeing the parkour again. Because one of the big changes that the game made was, uh, you could, like, run into... Uh, interiors of select buildings. That was all a scripted kind of you're running through their living room like jumping over a kitchen table sort of thing. Um, but it was still really, really neat. and I, I did appreciate uh, what the game did in that regard uh, to like kind of level the, uh, the parkour and the movement up a notch. Um, and then uh, 
I, I still say, like, to this day, Unity has probably the best parkour in the franchise. Uh, which, that's the other one that I'm really looking forward to playing again. Is, uh, is Assassin's Creed Unity. Okay, we do have some weird texture things going on. Like, I don't think his armor is supposed to look all rusted up and covered in blood like that. That, that seems... That doesn't seem right. Yeah, push me all you want, dude. Yeah, that's, um... That's not how that's supposed to look. Okay, so yeah, this, uh... I wonder if it's a save file kind of thing, because, um... I know for, uh, uh, for sure, whenever I first played the Ezio Trilogy again, um... Or, well, the Ezio Collection version of the game, uh, I didn't have all these kind of graphical errors. So that's odd. I'm wondering if, uh, there's some, like, jank with my save file. <laughs> Like, not to the point that it's a corrupted save file, but, but something's not right. Clearly. And I don't think the game has any updates. Because, uh, usually before you can play the game or start the, uh, the application, rather. Um. Good lord. Uh. Yeah, that was not... That was a bit extreme. Yeah, it it could be. Well, this is a this was a fresh save. Um, whenever I started, uh, but I do have that other save that I have from like four years ago, whenever the game first came out, roughly. Um, God, has it only been four years since the Ezio Collection? Yeah, there's definitely some some unintentional stuff going. The uh, physics model. That that seems heavier than it uh, than it needs to be. This is so strange. Yeah, I'm assuming it's my save because I don't remember all this from my other um, my other save file. Oh yeah, that uh, having it uh, on in the um, kind of suspended state, yeah. No, it could be carryover from that. I might have just permanently busted this save file. Which uh, wouldn't surprise me. Hey, a chest. Don't mind if I do. I don't need it, but I'll take it. Also, this objective must be up on this rooftop. Oh, what's up, homie? What's, uh, what's wrong, dog? You must be one of Bartolomeo's men. What's happened here? Where is he? Silvio Stugs attacked. Took him deeper into the distance. I got what you meant. It's all right. North. You can't type. I can't speak. Requiescat in pace. Rest in spaghetti, never forgetty. Bartolomeo from his cage. Is uh, is Bartolomeo who I think it is? I feel like that's a character from Brotherhood. Like he, he got a like a side role here in this game, and then in uh, Brotherhood he played a much larger role. We'll certainly find out. Cause uh, Volpe the the fox or whatever his name was, um, he uh. He kind of plays a minor role here, and then he he plays a, a more significant role in um in Brotherhood. And then uh, Michael Lavelli, I think. Good grief! Can't ledge grab today. Uh, Michael Lavelli also uh, he gets like introduced at the tail end of the game here, and then um he's like a main character in Brotherhood. Uh, I'm in a restricted area. That's fine. Where am I trying to get to? Not the rooftop, I can, I can probably figure that much. Uh, 
Uh, where's, uh... I hear him. I hear Bartolomeo. There we go. Good grief. That was a very high air assassination jump. Ow. Okay, so he's right, right past here. Jump down and say hi to these gentlemen. Alright, come on. Come at me. Yeah, let's let our boy out. Oh yeah, nope, nope, definitely is. I remember Bartolomeo. Maybe both, just to be safe. That's quite all right. Who are you? I am Ezio Auditore da Firenze. I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> let's see who winds up rescuing who. What do you mean? Down there! Stop them! Quit. Don't overextend it. It. yourself now. God! Let's see what you can do! I don't think that interest. <laughs> Also, I like that Assassin's Creed 2, they made uh, the um, the Hidden Blades a viable kind of melee weapon. Uh, mostly for countering, uh, but still more viable than uh, Assassin's Creed 1 did. Are we there yet? Dude, we just got out of combat. What are you talking about? <laughs> also, let me heal now. Yes, sir. And, uh, buy some medicine. There we go. Even that they outnumber us a hundred to one. As you wish, Alright, don't want him dropping in the water, because, uh, Ezio's the only person in this entire game that can swim. Most of Silvio's men are useless, but that one's troubled. Oh yeah, and there he goes talking about Dante setting him up as a target. How I have missed you. Silvio has set these men to ransacking your place. Prepare yourself for a fight. Ah, no need. Bartolomeo is always prepared for a fight. Oh uh, yeah, I've got uh I've got some uh Oh, what was I? Where was I going with that thought? I was about to say something and then I forgot and then I started again, but I forgot. Uh Give you value your life. Yeah, must have been important. Oh yeah, I can go and uh buy a new sword probably. I'll not go back into a cage. Then you'll go into the ground. Kill them. Ah, ah, the next next get in this back. Well, what have I done? Because uh, I, I know I've got kind of an underpowered sword for this point in the game. Granted, I mean, you can get through the entire game with, uh, like, the base sword. Wait a minute. Was I supposed to be down there still? I think I was. Uh... Oh, yeah, right here. Bianca, I hope she is unharmed. And go on to our next session. Bianca! Bianca! Is everything alright? What do you think? Look at this place. 
And poor Bianca. If something's happened to her. And, uh... Yeah, with the Ezio collection kind of having the issues that it's had, um, I kind of wonder if I want to boot up the 360 version of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Revelations, because uh, they're backwards compatible as well. Um, it's one of those interesting cases where the games were made backwards compatible before Ubisoft got around to making their own remasters. Um, so it's one of the only, like, cases where that is uh the thing because uh usually like a little bit later into xbox's backwards compatibility program uh the developers like were telling microsoft no no we don't want to do that we want to that's a game that we currently like are in the process of making a remaster or port of so yeah we're gonna pass on on uh having our game be part of the backwards compatibility program uh, and then Sony, they are facing a similar issue now with their uh, premium classics catalog, uh, which is all those like PS1, PS2, and PSP games that are uh, available for PlayStation Plus premium members. And uh, like most of the games that are making it onto that platform are uh, of the first person, not first person, uh, first party variety. Uh, so it's all Sony Interactive um, developed stuff and, and games. And, uh, yeah, it's one of the challenges with the program, uh, and it's why stuff like Metal Gear Solid 1, uh, older Armored Core games, just, uh, think of, uh, like, some of the titles I would personally like to see on there, uh, haven't made it over to the PlayStation Premium, uh, Classics catalog, and probably never will, uh, and then, um, like old Assassin, uh, not Assassin's Creed, old Ace Combat games, um, like the PS2 trilogy. I would love it if those were available on the uh, Classics catalog, um, but it's a it's a licensing nightmare to try and get those games back onto uh, like store shelves in any meaningful way, meaningful way. Oh yeah, absolutely, Keo. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be live for a couple hours. Um, so, might see you again. Take care. Have a good one. Let me get this, uh, this synchronization point. Because, um, yeah, we ran through, like, that entire mission not having the minimap. Well, we had a minimap, but we didn't have a detailed view. Uh, but, uh, going back to that classics catalog, like, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the issues with the way that backwards compatibility works in this kind of new console generation um, is to get a lot of these games up, especially on uh, uh, the online storefront, you have to acquire those licenses again. And um, that is easier said than done for uh, for quite a few titles. Uh, like going back to Ace Combat, all of the, the aircraft that are, uh, that are in the game, they have to get those individual licenses from the... Uh, their respective manufacturers and developers. Uh, so, like, they have to reach out to Boeing. They got to reach out to, to Raphael. They have to reach out to, you know, uh, American. They got to reach out to whoever. Um, MIG, even. Um, which uh, I can imagine right now, uh, with the current political landscape, getting any Russian aircraft in a video game would be quite difficult. Um, in a like an official capacity, Project Wingman, their kind of workaround for that is uh, all the aircraft are loosely modeled after real world uh, kind of aircraft, um, but names and all that fun stuff are fictitious. Um, so like that's their that's their workaround. Uh, but like Ace Combat Eight, if and when it ever happens, um, legitimately curious if. Uh, Many thanks Meg today. and Sukhoi will be, like, if options <laughs> for uh, for aircraft. That's a lot of NPCs over in that scene there. Huh. Wow. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing that many in one place. Usually they're a bit more spaced out. Because, um, uh, yeah, again, going back to the current political landscape... 
And then, um, like, like even first-person shooters, Battlefield 2042, uh, their kind of workaround somewhat was, um, they used the, the latest in, uh, in aircraft. So, like, they got the F-35, which, of course, they, they got a license to use the F-35. Um, but I don't think it's the F-57, uh, not F-57, Su-57 Felon. Uh, I think it's some, like, made-up variant of it, and that was their workaround to get the, uh, Su-57 in the game without having to reach out to Sukhoi and get a license for it. But, uh, Project Aces, they, they've always, like, if they can get the license to feature the aircraft, they will. Um, but, uh, yeah, that'll, that'll probably be different this go-around. I say that like uh, Ace Combat 8's right around the corner, but no, it's probably nowhere to be seen. Is Project Aces even still around? Uh, yeah, I don't know if they are. I haven't heard any news out of Project Aces in, like, a few years. They put out the DLC for Ace Combat 7, but I think that's been about it. The group I hired is under attack. I think they can handle themselves. I'll leave them be. Uh, yeah, okay. The pipe guys, I can't counter them. Shit, okay. Maybe I do need my, um... Maybe I do, do need my boys. Ow. Alright, now you I can counter. And I got myself backed into a corner. Oh, I guess I could have uh, grabbed him and stabbed him. Take care of this guy real quick. And... No, oop. I'm sure I'm hitting the wrong button. Oh, hey, my boys. Yeah, okay, I can, I can grab and kill. That's so much easier. Okay. And then uh, we got this guy right here, and backstab, goodbye. Speaking of backstab, goodbye. Um, what, uh... Bloodborne, yeah, there we go. Um, I need to pick up Bloodborne again at some point. Need to, to get some more progress in that. Because uh, at the moment, it's like I picked it up for Halloween, and then I haven't touched it since. And uh, I don't want it to be a game that I like picked up and forgot about. Because uh, I also have ideas of going back to Dark Souls 1 and uh, playing through it again. Because uh, I've never... I've never done the... Um, Dark Lord ending for Dark Souls. I've only ever done the um, uh, lighting of the uh, the first flame again, or uh, cycle of fire, or whatever whatever that ending's called. That's one I've always gone with whenever I played. I've never done the uh, the other ending where you say, "No, I'm not gonna continue this crazy cycle. I'm gonna let the uh, the Age of Darkness come about." So uh, I need to play Dark Souls 2, uh, 1 again. I need to play Dark Souls 2 and 3, because those, those two I've never played. I've only played the first one. Um, but uh, Bloodborne, finishing that will come first. But uh, yeah, I'm getting, getting sidetracked with other projects and games. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Haha, <laughs> no more light. Uh, so I don't I don't know how much of the Dark Souls kind of lore that you uh, are familiar with, but in Dark Souls One, basically, um, 
the two choices for the ending that you have. You can continue uh, the Age of Fire, uh, which by the time of Dark Souls, it's like naturally coming to its end. The whole point of the Chosen Undead is to find someone worthy enough to, to like kill Gwen and um, take his place uh, to, to keep the, the Age of Fire going. And if you let the embers burn out, uh, the Age of Darkness and the quote-unquote like Age of Man is supposed to, to start and flourish and all that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's like all the explanation you get for the game. But yeah, pretty much it's like, haha, no more light. And you get a ton of like big worm dragons to, to like worship you. Welcome back. And well done. Good stuff. <laughs> My host is restored to its former glory. Now Silvio will see just how grave a mistake he's made. How should we proceed? A direct assault against the Arsenale. But uh, yeah, I feel like playing through Dark Souls, just to keep on that topic for another minute or so, I guess, um, playing through Dark Souls again, I feel like I could do it pretty damn fast. Not like a speed run by any mean, but I could probably do a Dark Souls stream in like, I don't know, three, four sessions. <laughs> Gotta get some dice stuff done? Nice. Escort the mercenaries to the strategic locations. All right, I can do that. Uh, don't climb up any buildings because they'll just jump off like lemmings and fall to their death. Let me. Let's uh, let's go around this way. Or wait a minute, no, we don't want to. I don't know if the guards will aggro on us if we walk past them. I feel like they will. So I want to try and be mindful about. Who I walked by. Oh, yep. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't take kindly to that. Well, killed the big heavy pretty easily. And uh, buddy, you just bonked me in the head with your maze. But you, but you kindly not. All right, got a lot of guards up on this rooftop. It would seem. Uh, but they're not here on our level, so that's fine. Why is it showing... Did, did we lose somebody? Oh yeah, we got someone stuck on the other side of the building. Uh, that should be fine. We got everyone else here. Oh, we're supposed to, uh... Yeah, we're supposed to come in here. And I'm gonna exploit these backstabs as often as I can. One, because it's a funny animation. And uh, two, because it, it really takes care of these big guys rather easily. Speaking of, I should have grabbed and killed him. There we go. Here for my signal, as you wish. Andiamo. All right, that's the first little batch taken care of. Now to get the second group to uh to their location, which shouldn't be too far. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're doing a lot of setup missions, and then we'll take out Dante, and then we'll take out Silvio. That's how I kind of remember these events going. And it's like, as soon as you kill Silvio, I, I can't remember if it has us do the DLC stuff and then we take out Rodrigo Borgia. Or if we take out Rodrigo Borgia. Oh, goodness. Uh, Rodrigo Borgia and then we, uh, we do DLC. And that should be all the targets here. Oh, no, there's one more. Where is he? There you are, backstab. Goodbye. 
Now, let's get you guys to your spot. There we are. And so, Chewy, what are you doing, buddy? Huh? What you doing, pal? Cat Chewy, not me, Chewy. Consider it done. All right, this way. And we got one more. Hopefully this is our last little batch of uh, guys to escort. These things usually go by rule of three. No, Bard, really don't want to do this. I got I got the crew with me. Um, Okay, this, this is bringing us to a dead end with water. I want to keep them away from water. Also bribe him, just get some heat off us. We'll go ahead and rob him. Now I see the error of my ways. I should have gone this way. Across this bridge. And they'll be right around this corner. And took care of that. Here, this is where you wait. Send word when it's time to strike. All right, and that's our setup mission done. Uh, let me grab a synchronization point. Where's our nearest one? There we go. Climb up here. Oh, nope. Oh. Need to get over here. Hello. Hey, Luna. How you doing today? Doing pretty good. Uh, game's going fine. We're in the uh, the Venice arc of Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, don't know if you have played uh, or not. It's a very very popular game, so I'd be shocked if you hadn't. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, went and had lunch with my family today, uh, which was which was nice. And then I uh, came home, got set up for the stream, and here we are. But um, yeah, we're in the we're in the Venice arc of Assassin's Creed 2. So kind of the tail end. Uh, this might be the last session that we do. Uh, not entirely sure. It depends how long the DLC takes, because. Uh, I've only done the DLC for Assassin's Creed 2 once, I think. And that was when I was playing it via the, uh, the Tio Trilogy. Only played Brotherhood. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you barely remember it? Well, that is what we will be playing again after, uh, after 2. Because Brotherhood was the direct sequel to Assassin's Creed 2. So if you want a memory refresh, be sure to tune in for those fun AC Brotherhood uh, streams, which will be coming up probably, if not this week, probably by the end of next. But uh, we've just done a setup mission. We escorted a lot of uh, our Bandito friends to a... Uh, strategic positions throughout the city i can't speak today good grief <laughs> um but uh we escorted them around town to to various strategic positions Ugh. and uh now we're probably about to do the the main kind of assassination target mission if i'm fine on the map there it is And uh, I need to find... I think there's one right over here. I need to find one of these wanted posters to kind of clear my name a bit. Actually, no, that's a codex page. So I'm going to waste my time hanging around here. Also, Bard? No, no. Stay away. Not in the mood. Not today. There you go. There's a poster. Eh, that'll be enough for now. And is it on this side of the river or the other? Yeah, I can keep on going. Oh, 
But uh, yeah, how's uh, how's your day going? You asked me how I am, and I, I didn't ask you how you're doing. That was rather rude of me. Grab another uh, synchronization point too. Oh wait, no, I did ask how you're doing. But tell me how your day is going. What have you been up to? It was fun uh, messing with Natty in her stream yesterday. That was, uh, that was the first time I think I'd seen until dawn. And uh, yeah, totally completely forgot Rami Malik was in that. Uh, where's the point that I need to get up to to start climbing this building? Um, I think I missed it. Watch, it's gonna be this like one random black square. Yep, there we go. All right, back to business with climbing. Uh, and actually, wait, before I commit here, yes, this is what I wanted. Playing Overwatch, very nice. I have not touched Overwatch in, uh, yet. Yeah, I haven't touched it in years. Well, I say years. I, I played it, like, the first week that it, uh kind of made the switch over to Overwatch 2 because it was free to play. Um, but I only played like that one session and I, I I just I never did get super duper into Overwatch. Um, and just kind of dropped it again. It was like uh, nothing lost really. Uh, also is that a haystack? I hope that's a haystack. That's not a haystack. Amazing. <laughs> But, um, yeah, like, I, I just, something about it. I, I'm not big on, uh, like, Battle Pass heavy kind of shooter games. Um, and also the whole hero shooter genre, I never got super into it either. Uh, Gundam Evolution, don't know if you're familiar with it at all. It was basically Overwatch with a Gundam skin and everything. Uh, like, I feel like that would have been... If any of them could get me into them, it'd be that one. And no, uh, -uh. and now the servers are going offline uh, permanently uh, soon if they haven't already. And it's so funny too, because like the game's on its last leg, and they announced a new character for it, which I thought was just insane. That you're gonna introduce a new character after, uh. Like, and, and players are only going to have, like, a month to play that new character before it's like, alright, doors are shut forever. Thanks for playing. Goodbye. Get off my property. Because, <laughs> um, yeah. Like, Overwatch the first couple of years, I did, I did like it then. I don't know where it was that I, I really, like, dropped it, dropped it, but I think it was because a friend group that I used to play with all the time. We all just kind of split and went our separate ways. And that was a game that I only enjoyed it when playing with friends. Oh, are we getting Dante and Silvio in one go? Does say two birds, one blade. Perhaps we are. And I do vaguely remember this mission. I think we, like, lead basically an army to their front door. Oh, I'm so glad that those guards, like, for me lightly nudging them while I read chat, didn't uh, decide, hey, let's, uh, let's ice this fool. No. I cannot stand the bards. <laughs> in Assassin's Creed 2. They're one of the worst things about the entire game. <laughs> yeah, no, you, anytime I play this game, you're going to find me bullying the bards. The only game I won't bully the bards in is Final Fantasy XIV. And it's only because I was one. <laughs> uh, Ezio, 
What the... Uh, the fuck was that? You also come back right as the game starts to break again. Hides <laughs> your D&D bard? No, D&D bards are fine. Like, like uh, they, they fall in line with the Final Fantasy XIV bards. Though, I mean, if, if you're if you're a bard in D and D, no, I'm gonna bully you. Uh, but I was gonna bully you anyway, probably. Just because uh, you you seem to to bully me at at every twist and turn that you can. I haven't forgotten that you came in yesterday and uh, berated me for calling a cactuar daddy or whatever I did. That was a wild ride. That a uh, cactuar fight. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, two drink. I think what the problem here is is any time that you're present, uh, the game's just gonna break and shit itself. <laughs> I blame you. Yeah, I wanted to get stepped on. That's right. And I mean, hey, who who doesn't like a good stepping every now and then? It's a two drink curse. Yeah. All right, this is the side of the building I want to be on. I think. Uh, okay, maybe that's not the side of the building I want to be on. Sky's blue, birds fly, I break games. Alright, Scout from Team Fortress 2. <laughs> I would do a, a Scout impression, but uh, there's no way in hell I'm going to pull off a uh, doing a Boston Boston impression like that. Best I can muster is uh, Carl Weezer and fucking Kermit the Frog. <laughs> and on occasion, Blitzo from Hell of a Boss. <laughs> oh, no wonder this all felt so familiar. It's the same building I climbed like two minutes ago. Oh shit, redeemed Carl Weezer. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry, wait. It, before we start, Ezio's like just floating up there. I, I had to, to stop for a minute. <laughs> let me uh, let me meet the mic and uh, rehearse for a sec. Bartolomeo needs my help. Uh, Carl Weezer is uh, hanging out in Renaissance Italy. Um, they don't have any croissants, but I found an eclair. Oh shit! <laughs> there I go, falling to my death again. And uh, anyway, I was walking through, I was walking through Venice, and just out of nowhere, this guy fell right to my feet. <laughs> they landed on my llama. Oh god. Yeah, that uh that impression always really takes me out of it. That's why um don't know if people have noticed. <laughs> but but uh yeah, I've got the I've got the impressions cut off to where they can only be, be redeemed once per stream now. Uh just for my my throat's sake. <laughs> Cuz um you know, I I love my little impromptu impressions. I love to think that maybe one day I'll be a a voice actor on uh like the most minuscule of indie projects um but uh i also am conscious con conscious conscious yeah i'm conscious no cautious yeah i'm cautious of things uh i'm cautious of the fact that uh you know hey throat cancer is a thing uh i do drink alcohol and um you know that like that can like smoking uh, heighten your risk of throat cancer. Um, not that I, I think I'll have throat cancer at the age of 27 years old, but you never know. Um, but I, I do like to uh, protect and uh, uh, preserve my voice. <laughs> and uh, we got an ad break. Oh, we're in the midst of an ad break. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so like that's why I put that cut off on the... Um, on the impressions there for uh, my own sanity and safety because <laughs> if i didn't i feel like that would be something especially as the channel grows and gets larger uh people would exploit the hell out of that because i'm the type of guy that would exploit the hell out of that <laughs> 
get our uh, get our little sneaky backstabs and oh I thought that was a doctor no that's um that's Dante oh you can't backstab Dante oh come on that's lame can I grab him no he he breaks your grabs pretty instantly Dante come on let me let me kill you just a little poke No, stop it. Stop, big fella. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, stop. There we go. Killed one. Oh, yeah, we gotta follow Dante to Silvio. It's all coming back to me now. Oh, yeah. They get on a boat. I think we have to go back to Tuscany. Yeah, I feel like we gotta go back to Tuscany. Also, welcome back, everybody. Uh, sorry about the ad break. Um, but yeah, to like to reiterate, Luna, I think you might have gotten cut off there. Um, can I not kill them here? Oh, I can. Okay, that's uh, that's Silvio taking care of. Um, but yeah, like <laughs> I've got those um, those impressions cut off to like one redeem per stream. Um, for uh, for my sake. <laughs> and uh let me heal yeah that'd be great thanks fellas for not swinging for about two seconds all right now uh, I, I say you stop for two seconds and then here you go immediately all right you guys take care of him i'm gonna walk this way oh he's on a boat oh buddy being on a boat by yourself no you're not by yourself Let me just beat the shit out of you real quick. Motherfucker owes me money. I don't know if you could hear me tapping away at the X button to, to smack him. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was Rock'em Sock'em Robots there for a minute. Also, where the hell did Silvio come from? How was he back? It was audible, fantastic, as it should be. <laughs> I can never tell whenever uh, doing the um, the Final Fantasy VIII button mashes for the <laughs> for the boost if uh, that's audible as well. I'm assuming so because usually I hold my controller like right up to the to the microphone. <laughs> oh, I don't even have to escape. It just like says, "Hey, no, you're 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 off the hook, Chief." <laughs> gotcha. Uh, well, the uh, the Xbox One controller, uh, it's always been more clicky. It's got more of that, uh, like, audible feedback, which, uh, you know, some people, I know, they like mechanical keyboards that are really clicky and, and audible. I'm not. I like a good, quiet keyboard. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, the controllers, like, the Xbox One controllers, like, the mechanical keyboard... And then the PS5 controllers, like that nice, quiet controller keyboard that uh, that I prefer. Which it wasn't always that case, which is so funny. Um, whenever the Xbox One and the PS4 came out, uh, the Xbox One controller, I liked it so much more. Uh, now the DualSense 4, or the, uh, the DualShock 4... Um, that was a really good controller. I did like it. It was steps and above beyond the uh, DualShock 3 from the PS3. Because uh, they made it ever so slightly larger. And then the, the curves and the form of the controller, it just felt nicer in my hands. Um, Xbox, I have, I have kind of larger hands, so the Xbox controller has always felt more natural for me. Uh, and it's probably the controller that I would use in a... Uh, like taking the controller to a PC, um, uh, uh, to like a console to PC kind of play session. Like if I want to share the controller, like yeah, Xbox is still going to be like my go-to. Um, the DualSense on the PS5, now it is compatible with PC, which I think it's one of the first in, in the like Sony controller lineup. I don't know if the DualShock 4 was compatible or not. I feel like it was, maybe, or they had a version of it that was for PC. I'm... 
I don't know. I'm not as versed on Sony and their compatibility with, with things. Uh, but I know DualSense, like, right out the gate was PC compatible. Um, so a lot of people are getting dual senses for their PC because that controller feels so nice. Uh, the only thing you're not getting by not having it connected with the PlayStation 5 is the uh, haptic triggers, which, I mean, you can take it or leave it for me personally. Um, but I know a lot of people like that haptic feedback. These last two codex pages, I was studying the copies. I don't know why I never saw it before, but when put together, I realize the markings on the back clarify into words. Here, the prophet will appear when the second piece is brought to the floating city. Prophet. Yeah, I feel like we're definitely getting the end game stuff. Because I thought Silvio and Dante were going to run off to Tuscany, and then they didn't. So we're still here in uh, Venice. My uncle Mario spoke of it. Long ago, a prophecy hidden in the codex, leading to an ancient vault. Also, only an hour in, and we're at this point, so not bad. If we do have to do the DLC, uh, I feel like that'll only be an hour or so. That's not good. So this this could still be the uh, the last session. That's why they sent the ship to Cyprus to find this piece of Eden and bring it back to Venezia. When the second piece is brought to the floating city, the prophet will appear. Only the prophet can open the vault. My God! When my uncle told me about the Codex, I was too young, too brash to imagine it was anything but an old man's fantasy. But now I see. It's here, shouting like really close to some Templar guards, just letting you know. <laughs> it was all part of his plan. To find the vault. Oh man, Chewie, you're in that like really knocked out nap phase where like you go limp and everything. The boat from Cyprus arrives tomorrow. I plan to be there to meet it. Good luck, my friend. All right, thanks for the uh, the details on the. No. <laughs> I don't care if it's broad daylight. Just no. <laughs> Get some distance between me and them. Alright. You won't chase me in the water. I know you're kind. But, <laughs> but uh, okay, so so we got our info from, uh, from Leonardo. And I think we're about to do our last mission here in Venice for the DLC stuff. Wow, they are, they are persistent. Alright, I'm gonna lose him here though. But uh, do we have the marker? Yes we do, it's uh, right up ahead. Let me get that marked. Torre del Orologio? I uh, probably butchered that pronunciation. Anyway! <laughs> Thank you for that uh, codex entry. Not what I was looking for, because I was looking for my map. There we go. Memory start. Yeah, my Italian's rusty. It's been a, uh, it's been a few months since I did Duolingo Italian lessons. I've kind of fully made the jump over to French, which um, I might embarrass myself with uh, whipping out whenever we get to Assassin's Creed Unity. But, uh, we'll just have to see. Alright, I stabbed the last bard. I'm just gonna outrun this one. I can't kill everybody. As, as much as I wish I could kill all the bards in the vicinity. I, uh, I will refrain. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's buy some new armor. Let's get that chest piece those pauldrons and uh that completely knocked me out <laughs> yeah that's uh that's all my money gone uh let me let me talk to you again yeah shop repair those repairs in 
Fantastic. That should do, I hope. And please, come back often. Now those textures look right, so maybe I was wrong earlier. Maybe there isn't a texture bug. Maybe it's just that lighting was really harsh. And uh, let me let me get caught up on chat here. I need a mechanical keyboard, but that does not lend to recording. Well, oh yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I have some PC streamer buddies that I watch. And, uh, yeah, you can hear their keyboards all the time, especially whenever they're responding to, like, a Discord message. Um, yeah, you, you hear it all. <laughs> Do I want to fast travel over to, um... Monteregione? I feel like I do. Where's my nearest fast travel? Uh... Cause I got I got fat stacks of cash over there, and um, I can buy that last piece of armor. And then uh, oh, I, I also need to probably look at swords. All right, I said I wouldn't, but dude, you gotta stop. You gotta be a lesson. Surely somewhere they are going to get the picture. Don't walk up to that dude in the white hood. Bards, man, I swear. Oh, you know what? There, there is one other bard that I do really appreciate and like, and that's uh, that's Dandelion from the Witcher games. And then uh, I felt the actor that depicts him in the uh, the live action Witcher TV series. He he did a pretty solid job. I do like Dandelion in the TV show. I only watched the first season though. I couldn't get through the second one. Uh, just something about it just uh couldn't couldn't get into it at all and then uh then i lost access to netflix which uh no biggie but um oh goodness i'm terribly sorry sir that's great i'm gonna eat you like rats wait a minute Yeah, that, that, that's not what I meant to say. Monteregione, let's go to the villa real quick. Oh, hello, Chewy. Welcome back to the world of the living. Alright, here we are. Let's go run. Grab stuff from the bank. Oh, the, the time jumps in the Witcher series? Yeah. Yeah. That that was like where that was where series uh, t series that's where season one really lost me too, because uh, the time drops uh, time drops. God, I cannot speak today. Uh, the time jumps they they really were jarring, um, and they they just they kept coming. It's like every every episode it would start with a time jump, or like halfway through you would have a time jump. They were so random in their placement. And it's because they were trying to establish a universe like past, uh, while also trying to introduce her introduction to to Geralt, <laughs> which, which like, that's great, but it's very confusing the way that you're doing it right now. Like, don't do it like that. It's it's not that hard. There are better ways to go about doing time jumps. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, it, it didn't work out. What I feel like they maybe could have done, and I'm sure it would have not gone over well with viewers just the same, and probably the producers weren't on board with it, but what they should have done was, like, had maybe, have a cold opening for the episode, uh, where it's, it's Yennefer, um, but then, like, through dialogue or whatever, we find out, oh, this is, this is in the past. What's going on here? Like, establish some mystery and, uh, like, uh, some, some uncertainty of it. Like, yeah, just set it up as just, oh, out of nowhere, we're introduced to a new character and it's 
60 years in the past, uh, like, blah, 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 get the introductory, like, like set up the character the way you want to do in the past, and then, like, have a cart hard cut, and, uh, oh, it's present day. Um, or reveal it through dialogue, like, hey, we've made a time jump, it's present day. Character looks just the same, because no aging, or, oh, she's a witch, she doesn't age like everybody else, stuff like that. Like, there were such better ways that they could have gone about doing that. Um, but no, it's like, the, the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like, past, present, past, present, no, uh-uh, stop, no. That ain't it, Chief. <laughs> um, and I don't want to buy the band braces. I want to buy, yeah, I want to buy a weapon. Because I have, do I have the captain sword? I feel like it, yeah, I've got the captain sword. I don't have enough for Shiavana. Uh, is Milanese sword better? It is. Old Syrian sword, sword of Altair. I forgot the, to buy the sword of Altair, honestly. Uh, that's one I probably should have just saved up for. Anyway, we'll go with the Milanese sword so that we do get a like a firm hard upgrade. It'll be faster. That's nice. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> in, in regards to to the Witcher. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so, like, I lost Netflix, so I, I don't have any way of watching or trying to pick it up again, which is totally fine by me. Uh, especially with the, uh, is it season three that they, they replaced, uh, what's his name with, um, with, uh, Liam Hemsworth? Because, uh, that's going to be jarring. I don't care how much you tell us, like, oh, it's happening. It's going to be a pretty seamless transition from, uh, you know, first dude to Liam. No, it's not. It'll never be as seamless. Any Anytime you do a recast of your main character, you're just asking for uh, people to, to, like, drop the show or lose interest very fast. Which the show is already in a state of decline, as far as I'm concerned, with... Uh, with that second season and then they had that uh like one-off um spin-off series kind of deal uh which had the one season that was only so many episodes or whatever and it didn't really take off like they'd hoped and i said i was done with the witcher and then there i went talking about uh uh henry cavill yeah Yeah, yeah, they're going from Henry Cavill to to Liam Hemsworth, which uh, the last thing that I can re like vividly recall seeing Liam Hemsworth in was uh, the Hunger Games, like back a decade ago when I was, you know, at that age bracket where oh yeah no this is what I'm into, and then they split the fourth movie or whatever. Oh no, they split the third book in the two movies. It fell into that. Uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows kind of trend, uh, where you're gonna turn the last book into the works into a two-parter, just because you can, because more money. And um, yeah, like by the by the third movie in the Hunger Games, I read all the books, um, but uh, by that third movie, I was I was so done. I was I was out of it. I didn't like the way that the movie handled the second book. I think. It made enough changes that I was like, oh, yeah, no, the book's way better. All right, I'm not missing anything by not watching these. And then also around that time, Jennifer Lawrence was showing up in everything. Because, like, right after uh, The Hunger Games, part three, one and a half, whatever, uh, <laughs> it's like choosing that, um, like, really awful space survival uh alien on the ship kind of movie thing with chris pratt uh which that was another like pairing of two actors that are in everything um that really killed my interest in it from the get-go 
But uh, she's a she's not a bad actress. She's kind of kooky as a person, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, turns out a lot of actors and actresses are. I could be wrong. I I I honestly just don't keep up with J Lo. <laughs> I think I have to get up on this wall. I gotta figure out where and how. Hey, pal. Take a good nap, alright? You're doing great, Chief. Okay. Uh, I think I can jump over here. Yeah. Yeah, now we're cooking with grease. Yeah, this is where I wanna be. Alright, wait a minute. I wanna take a look at this guy's clothes. I mean, I know I just... Chill, bud. Um, I know I just stabbed him. But still, like, something about the texture. Something... It looks odd. Like, it's a, it's a vest. But sort of like the big full-plate armor dudes. It's like it's got this kind of rustic... Like, metallic rust kind of effect going on to it. And anyway, that's it's very odd. I don't... I don't recall the guards looking like that. Yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch, he showed up everywhere. Um, <laughs> which the the mocap captures of uh, Benedict in the uh, Desolation of Smog, those clips will never not be funny to me. Like, dude, full sent it, which is where I give him props. Like, he is seriously a talented actor. Um, but, like, my guy, you're not Andy Circus. You didn't have to get on all fours, crawl around like a cat, and pretend you're a dragon. Um, like, you, all you had to do was show up in the recording studio. You, you didn't get paid more to, to get on your hands and knees, I promise you. <laughs> And, uh, where the hell is this guy going? I super lost him. Uh, grab the ledge, grab the ledge, or break my knees. That works. Okay, there he is. Alright, I can catch up. This is fine. Um, but, like, uh, yeah. Like, he was great in that. I'm trying to think what else. He was in the Imitation Game, which I haven't seen, but I really want to watch. Um, that was about the, uh, the openly gay, uh, British codebreaker who uh, kind of broke the Enigma machine. Also, I just stood there and let that guy turn around and see me. Um, yeah, people people love when the actors full send it like that, which I get. But um, yeah, I want to I want to see the imitation game. Uh, Trying to think what else he was in. He was in Sherlock, which was uh, kind of one of his big kind of breakout roles. Then he got. Uh, then he was in MCU, of course, as Doctor Strange, which he's still one of my favorite characters out of the MCU. Especially now that like all the quote unquote old guard, <laughs> whatever you want to. Good lord, um, like the the original like cast and actors that they had for the initial like Phase One and Two, like almost all of them are gone. Um, but also I'm like super MCU'd out, so I haven't kept up with anything. I did watch, uh, uh, whatever, uh, Multiverse of Madness, I think is what it was called. Uh, the, the second Doctor Strange movie. Um, I had a lot of fun with it, but I think uh, I jumped off the same exact spot. The dude broke my fall though. So, oh, but I got detected. <laughs> um, yeah, getting getting caught up on chat. Sorry. Yeah, I was I was a bit like shocked too whenever I saw. Oh, he's gonna be in the MCU now as Doctor Strange. I mean, he certainly looks apart, especially with the with the beard and all. Um, I was thinking like he wasn't gonna grow any facial hair or whatever for the role, which would have been a certainly a choice. Um, but uh, no, he did, and uh, 
I liked him. But uh, back to Multiverse of Madness, like, that was Sam Raimi. So, like, of course I wanted to watch it. And because it was Sam Raimi, honestly, I think it might be one of my favorite MCU movies. Um, especially out of, like, the, the recent latest waves of films. But, um, yeah, it took me... I didn't watch uh, Quantum Mania until uh, until it hit uh, Disney Plus. I'm trying to think which ones, uh, which movies have I not watched? Uh, I'm gonna have to like wrap my brain because I'm so behind. Uh, the TV shows, I know I'm, I'm hella behind on those. Wow, I like smacked the shit out of that guy. <laughs> they watched me smack the shit out of that guy, and they're like, oh no, he's too far, let's walk away. Oh, do I have to kill him now? Oh no, he got distracted, because uh, he saw the, the dead body. Um, yeah, I haven't watched, um, like, Secret Invasion, which uh, was pretty hella mid, from what I've read. <laughs> I didn't watch uh, Miss Marvel. I didn't watch Hawkeye. I tried watching Hawkeye. I watched like the first episode and said, nah, I'm not into it. And I think it's because it was like a Christmas show, at least for the first couple episodes, which was uh, uh, certainly a choice. I never watched She-Hulk. I want to though. Um, like I, I'm going to at some point get caught up on the MCU stuff that I missed out on. Um, but I'm just so fatigued from it <laughs> that I don't care. Uh, like, uh, this, this coming Thanksgiving, uh, like, here and God, it's only a week out. Um, but uh, my brother, he wanted to go and see uh, The Marvels, uh, the new Brie Larson Captain Marvel movie with Miss Marvel from the TV series and everything. Anyway, he wants to go see that. My dad texts me and he's like, uh, hey, man. Uh, your your brother he wants to go see the Marvels. I'm not I'm not really sure I want to go see that. Is there anything else playing? Can you talk to him? <laughs> and um, I said yeah I'll I'll, uh, I'll talk to him see what I can do. And um, so I text my brother and I tell him like hey uh, heard you want to go see the Marvels. Well, Dad and I we aren't uh, we aren't as keen on it. We want to go see Napoleon. And um, my brother, he asked me, like, who's Napoleon? What's what's Napoleon? Um, and just for some context, he is, uh, he is autistic. Um, never took a history course, really, or anything like that. So, of course, he doesn't doesn't know who Napoleon is. Um, but that that's not the point. Like, what, what I'm getting at is, like, if he gets hooked on wanting to see a movie, it's really hard to get him sold on the idea of watching something else. Um... So I was shocked whenever he asked me, like, hey, who's Napoleon? And I just told him, oh, he's a really prolific and famous French emperor. Uh, he was like, okay, I'll go see Napoleon. I was I was floored. <laughs> so we're going to go see Napoleon uh, this Thanksgiving. I'm looking forward to it. It's Joaquin Phoenix. I love Joaquin Phoenix. And then, um, was it Ridley Scott directing? I don't think it is, but I feel like it might have been. I'll have to double check. Uh... But the whole premise of the movie, like, it's, it's fucking Napoleon. I want to go see it. So we're, we're, we're going to go see it. And it's going to be the first movie that we've seen since, like... God, what was the last movie that we saw for Dad? Because it was something that he was, uh... He liked it, but he wasn't super into it. Oh, it was Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. Yeah, it was Top Gun Maverick. Which, um, the only reason he wasn't super into it was because three at a time? Hell no, guys. Y'all gotta fuck off. Um, I, as you can see, I'm chasing the dude. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, Top Gun Maverick, which the only reason he wasn't super on board with it was, like, after the movie, he said, like, Oh, that was basically Top Gun, but with F-18s instead of F-14 Tomcats, right? It's like, uh, no, it changed up quite a bit in the movie. Like, quite a bit. I'm gonna hide right here. Hey, you don't see me. Turn around. That's what I thought. Um, 
yeah, he wasn't super into it. And then uh, I had to explain to my dad, like, no, the maneuvers that they're doing in the, the movie aren't as far-fetched as, like, you probably think they were. <laughs> and after that, I, I explained to him, like, the powerhouse that the F-18 was, or is, like, it's no F-15, uh, but it, it's no slouch either. Um, and uh, anyway, afterwards, he's like, oh, okay. Well, I liked it. Just wasn't what I was expecting. Which, fine, whatever. That's a very dad explain uh, the response to it. <laughs> Man, this is uh, turning into a lot of story time with Chewy Coffee. <laughs> I should do that more. Oh, am I dropping down and killing this fool? I think I am. Whee! Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm taking a spit. Also, that is definitely not the outfit that he was wearing. I don't know what's going on here. And uh, getting getting caught up on chat. Give me a sec. Invasion needed more space to breathe. I enjoyed Hawkeye. She-Hulk was fun, especially if you like your source material. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, definitely the vibe that I got from the, uh, the overall film. Um, or film series. And, uh, yeah, Secret Invasion, I think the biggest thing that it had, like, going against it was it was, like, a six-part series. Uh, it only got the six episodes. It probably could have benefited from having, like, one or two more just to help flesh out some of the plot points that I'm assuming it struggled with. Um, because I have, like, a vague idea of what the, uh, the plot of Secret Invasion was. I remember there was one of those animated Avengers movies, and it uh it covered that same uh, Kree invasion sort of dealio, uh, where it's like government officials and oh no, nope, they're actually aliens. They've secretly infiltrated everything. Yada yada yada. Blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, like with a short series like that, uh. It's amazing what one or two more episodes can do for the overall uh, pacing. Because um, I, I certainly felt that way about some of um, uh, some of the Star Wars shows. Like, not going into details, but like Mandalorian. Uh, the first season, I thought the pacing was fine. Season two, uh, you're, you're kind of losing us. Um, Book of Boba Fett was an issue uh it wasn't bad but it was an issue uh it certainly lost track of what it wanted to be and what it wanted to do like two episodes in which you never want that to happen with your tv series uh and then uh yeah stuff like that but pacing for most of the other shows has been fine ahsoka probably could have benefited from one other episode um but but yeah like those those short Shorter, shorter series like that, that... Buddy, do you see? I'm wearing the same goddamn outfit. Back off. You don't want these hands. I then. Motherfucker. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, like one or two extra episodes. They, they can do a lot. He was mad. I'm mad. You don't walk up to me waving your hands around like, Hey, punto, you knocked over my box. I don't give a shit. I'm carrying a box. My box is more important. Have some respect. You really have it? You were not followed. Absolutely. Everything went perfect. Went from story time Everything chewy coffee to I am not okay chewy aspects. coffee. <laughs> mission to Cyprus was more difficult than expected. There were complications. Lost my train of thought. Every Damn time. it. That's you. Oh, was that a quick time event that I missed? I think it was. I think it said press X to, like, keep them off me. Anyway. That's, like, the first quick time event I think I've missed. For what's in this box. And look, there's nobody here. And it's a shame, because I think that's one that, regardless of what you do, it doesn't change. I don't think if you press X, you drop the box and, like, double-stab him, you know, uh, 
Christo Redentor the dudes. You just... It's business as usual. And, uh, hold on. Let me see what you say. Well, there's nobody. Well, there's one dude right there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, let me get my sword out. Hey, alright, thanks. Alright, we can commence. Buddy, I've been countering the entire game. You're not that guy. You are not that guy. No, come at me. Give me your worst. I will punch you in the face. I will kick you in the groin. You, you don't want to mess. You, you don't want these hands. I am Ezio Auditore da Firenze. I've had enough. <laughs> I feel like Ezio really needed like uh, his uh the. Uh, Prince's Bride, uh, you killed my father, prepare to die kind of moment. No, it's just like, sup, bitch. And then they start fighting. And then the fight's really ingenious. Um, I think that's the right word for it. What I mean is, it's really boring. Because uh, the fight, unless you want to mash X a lot, it really is. Wait from the slash, hit X at the right time. Proceed. Which, um, thankfully, later games did get a better grasp on. Because, uh, Brotherhood, their big combat kind of contribution to the series was, uh, chaining kills together. So if I kill a guy, and then so long as someone isn't trying to attack me, if I hit X again and, like, attack the next target, I chain the kills, it, and it's instantaneous. Um, unless they're like a really, really beefed up armor guy. Then, yeah, okay, you might have some issues. And, uh, got an ad break coming up here in just a moment, like letting folks know for, uh, for they hit. Ow. All right, Johnny Pikeman, I'm coming for your ass next. Give me just a moment. Ow. Ow. My timing's off. You. you. No, come here. Yeah, I get blood on his face. No, don't run. Don't worry, Nipote. You are not alone. Volpe? Break him with the butcher knife. God damn. Save your questions, brother. Don't let Bolton leave that box. Nice keeping an eye out, Antonio. I know it groped you last stream, but now we're even. Now you all shall die. Oh wait, no, you don't want to grab and good night. Yeah, if I'm able to sneak around him, it's really easy. Just, uh, hee hee, poke him in the back. Now, where's, uh, where's Rodrigo? There he is. I wish you could backstab him. That'd make it so much easier. Like, Ezio, you had him right there. What happened? Alright, backstab, big fella. Ow! Bartolomeo, what the hell, man? Like, he wailed on me. Out of hell. For you, Ambrosito. You will die by my hand, just like your father. This war has been going on far longer than either. Yeah, I remember when I first played Assassin's Creed 2, before the, the DLC came out. And this was kind of like your last confrontation before you go back to your villa and then come back again for another like final confrontation um like this this whole fight sequence here felt very underwhelming and then also i i could be wrong on it but i felt like the pacing was kind of out of nowhere i 
I like how he's still shining from uh, having the targeting ridicule on him. <laughs> but uh, the pacing in, in Assassin's Creed 2, for the most part, it's pretty good. Um, I, I do like this moment where you get saved by like everyone that you help throughout the entire game. And it's like setting up the Assassin's Brotherhood. Like, that's good. I like that. Very nice. Um... But like some of the pacing what? beats here towards the end are, are, are a little quick. It's not as bad as Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Uh, Brotherhood has a very rushed ending. And then uh, Revelations... I'll be real, I don't remember Revelations. I remember the modern day stuff. I don't remember the Ezio part, except for... Uh, a particular scene where you find a particular character from a previous game. Which uh, I don't want to say too much, because we're of course going to play Revelations. And uh, I would rather save it for them. And uh, welcome back everybody. Don't worry, you didn't miss too much if you were uh, stuck there waiting for the ads. Whoa, that pop in. <laughs> uh, you weren't waiting for too much with the ads. We just did the very boring uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots fight against Rodrigo Borgia. Not the like final confrontation, but like the next to final confrontation with them. But uh, I'm not going to ruin this moment here. Everything is permitted. We work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. It is time, Ezio. In this modern age, we are not so literal as our ancestors, but our seal is no less permanent. Are you ready to join us? I am. This only hurts for a while, brother. Like so many things. Benvenuto, Ezio. You are one of us now. Come, we have much to do. Good stuff. And, uh, hey, real quick, let me know. Uh, so, I, I know with most games, I don't have subtitles on. Uh, but I, I've been thinking, like, in the context of streaming games and the kind of balance between... Uh, me playing the game, providing commentary, while also having the game going as, like, context for everyone else. Uh, should I turn subtitles on? Thoughts? And, uh, hey, you got the Venetian cape. I can't remember what that one looks like. I think it's blue. Subtitles. Alright, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll turn them on. And then um, I'll, I'll keep that in mind going forward with other games. Am I able to do that now? Yeah, hey, general. Subtitles, get those popped on real quick. And brightness at 6. Do I want to knock that down? No, I think it's fine. Are you okay? Do you want to stop? Yeah, looking at playback, brightness seems fine. I don't think it's been oversaturated anywhere. If you knock it up above 6.0, and this is like a, a general, uh, it's like a, a general, um, uh -oh. Ezio collection kind of thing, oh with any of the so, games, if you knock that brightness over 6, it washes it out terribly. You want to share with the rest of us? Rodrigo Borgia is elected Pope in 1492, which means Ezio's greatest enemy is now also the most powerful man in Italy. Always wanted to visit the Vatican. Well, your luck's in, Desmond. Happy days. Because that's exactly where you're going. And, oh, wait a minute. Is it just throwing me into the final confrontation? I thought, uh, thought we did the DLC stuff before this. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. What is it, Leonardo? What does it do? I could no more explain this than explain to you why the Earth goes around the sun. You mean the sun around the Okay, this is where, uh, yeah, the pacing... No, wait, we just took the Apple of Eden from Rodrigo and Emran. very ancient artifact. The Codex refers to it as a piece of Eden. The Spaniard. 
He called it the apple. Like Eve's apple. Of forbidden knowledge. I got so distracted talking about uh, the stories and stuff while fighting Rodrigo, I forgot that the whole reason we were beating him up was to take the Apple of Eden from him. <laughs> this must never fall into the wrong hands. It would drive weaker minds insane. No doubt the Spaniard will be relentless in his desire to gain it back. Ezio. You must protect this with all the skills we have taught you. I don't know if the depth field effect was necessary for this scene. Protected by cannons, and our ally controls it. Who is this ally? Her name is Katarina Sforza. You don't say. I think I may enjoy this mission. Thank you for everything. And then, uh, yeah, so this is starting the, uh, the kind of DLC Leonardo, segment of the game. Ezio tells me you travel off into Milan. I have a grand villain Which, uh, yeah, it goes know. into the pacing issues that I think the game had before. And, uh, the Ezio collection kind of, sort of, fixes. Um, because, like, I, I think, I think in the base game, before you got the DLC, like, instead of having this, uh, sequence where you go back to Ramagna, um, it's like, oh, we've got the Apple of Eden, and then, like, there's a cutscene at some point, Oh no, we don't have the Apple of Eden. And everyone's like, confused. Player-wise, player-wise, you're confused. Like, wait, what happened? Why Why don't we have the Apple? Like, how'd we lose it? Um, and uh, the DLC missions here, like, their whole purpose is to explain, like, hey, here's what you missed. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And uh, it does clear up those kind of pacing issues. Oh, yeah, there we go. We got the uh, Venetian cape on right now. It's blue. It's got the uh, it's got the winged lion on the side. That's nice. Not as nice as the uh, Medici cape. I do prefer that one over uh, the Venetian. Um, not bad. Then I want to find a doctor. Where's the nearest doctor? Because uh, doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of loving you. There they are. And uh, run around this way. Ma'am, I'll be back. I'm going to run through the swamp and get healed. Oh, hi, horse. You're going to make this a lot easier. But also, with the way that we are going to be doing the DLC missions, um, it's going to be, like, rather pop-off, kind of quick. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. I can't ride the horse in the town. I'm thinking of uh, Brotherhood and Assassin's Creed 3. Dismount. There we go. AFK again? No worries. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, like, with the way I'll be doing the missions, it's going to feel kind of rushed. Just because we are in that last stretch of the game. And, um... Yeah, I don't... I don't know how long the DLC is. Bring me your sick Shop Rooney, let's get that heal now. And, uh, let's heal... Or fill up on supplies, there we go. You should feel better now, but take care in future. And I've got 16,000. I think I've got enough where I could buy the next piece of armor. Uh, armor. Scroll down. Yeah, give me those van braces. Grazie. Well, one man's coin is as good as another. All right, take care, Holmes. Let me uh, resume Rooney. Set a marker, get rid of the marker. Now to go ahead for that main mission. Hey, I just spent a lot of money. I'm gonna... Now, you know what? What was your goal here? Alright. Have a good one.
bro really said, okay, I'm going to hop on a barrel. He'll never get me here. Alright, now we've got a horse right here. Hey, pal. Carry me to my destination, if you will, please. And I'm actually, hey, real quick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop up, grab some water. I'll be right back. Hey, Chewster. Chewy, I know you were napping, and you looked very comfortable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick you up, set you right there. I'll be back, okay, old timer? I'll be back too, chat. Alright, I've returned, hydrated, and we are heading for this primary mission, which I should probably get marked, I don't know. There it is. Repaired memory. Well, if I said, oh, it's right there, and turn the opposite direction from it. All right, here we go. Well, well. Look who it oh, is. hello, Chewy. You were quick to come I back. When we met, you were a bit special, but an assassin. Hmm. All right, Company Katarina Machiavelli to Forley. Walk with me, Karen. You're going to love Forley. The cannons and Architadella alone go back a hundred years. The artifact will be quite safe there. Also, a guard of her cape. I've never heard of a huh. woman ruling her own city before. It's very impressive. Well, it was my husband's before, of course. He died. Oh. I'm sorry. Don't be. I had him killed. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Girolamo Riario was working for the Templars, making a map of the locations of the remaining Codex pages. Also, it's so weird having, like, the, uh, the guard models, and they're not, um, they're not enemies for a change. Why is there an angry crowd running up? Oh, never mind. It's not an angry crowd. Something is certainly afoot, and I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it. Aspetta, what's happening? They came as soon as you left the city walls, Signora. The city is under attack. What? By who? The Orsi brothers, Signora. Oh, sangue di Giuda. Who are the Orsi? The same canali I hired to kill my husband. It's the Spaniard, of course. The Orsi have no worldview bigger than their purse. But how could he know where we Oh, yeah, another have? nice benefit of the, uh... Because they're not here for the subtitles. So, um, the Ezio Trilogy games and, uh, yeah, the, well, the Ezio Trilogy games in particular, um, they love to do that mix of Italian and English with the, uh, with the dialogue. And, um, they, uh, sorry, I was getting a lot of Twitter notifications there. Um, but, uh, they, they love to do that thing where it mixes. Um, English with uh, Italian, and for the Italian words, it'll, it'll give you the translation in the uh, in the subtitles. So for people that that don't know a lot of Italian or none at all, uh, they can kind of learn some if they wanted to via the video game, or at least know what they're being called if someone insults you. <laughs> And, uh, they're all running off. Yeah, okay. Try and keep up with them. Just a quick thought that came to mind while I was looking at the, uh, subtitles there. Double-crossing bastards! Is there another way into this place? Aspetta! Perhaps yes. 
There's an old tunnel under the western wall from the canal. Bene. I'll be right back. Hey, you! Yeah, I'm talking to you. You spineless dogs. You occupy my city, my home. You think I'm going to stand here and do nothing about it? How about I come up there and rip your ballet off? What kind of men are you? Doing the beating of your masters for loose change. You're not afraid of me. You will be when I come up there and cut your heads off, piece down your necks, and shove your faces up my pika. I'll stick your body. Good to grief, ma'am. <laughs> How's that sound? You laugh. You wouldn't if I was a man. You think I wouldn't do it just because of this? Letete, le mie tete. I bet you want to see them, don't you? You wish you could touch them. You wish you could lick them. Oh yeah, she's uh she's distracting them while we come over this way and uh sneak in. Oops. I got distracted by the uh very very uh suggestive dialogue there. Good lord. Um I forgot how to control the boat. There we go. Now now we're cooking with grease. I'm not a very graceful boat driver. And stab. Ow, sir. No, thank you. You grab slice. Yeah, I I don't know if whenever I initially played the game if I knew just grab the dude, slit their throats with the uh with the pikes. <laughs> that really does make fighting them so much easier. Uh and then I need to swim under the gate, don't I? Set this area. I feel like it is. I'm up and around, maybe. Oh yeah, yep, right over here. And let's get those gates open. Can I climb up here? No. Look how there's a huge battle going on, and dudes just like, yeah, I'm gonna stand out and shout still. Maybe someone will stop by and listen. <laughs> Alright, over to the gate. Hi, gentlemen. No, you don't see me. Oh, you saw me. Well, let, let me tell you what. Christ, she is still, like, laying down the law with the disses on these guys. <laughs> oh, I thought they lost me in the water. Nope, they see me. Ooh, throwing rocks? Gentlemen, there are other ways to resolve this. Now, this is where you want to pull out your rocks and throw them at me. Uh, now you don't? Okay. Well, alright. Don't be surprised when I get away. Alright, fellas. Let me get this gate open. Have to be anonymous to interact? Oh, come on. Alright, guess we'll hang out here for a minute. There we go. Now we interact. Oh yeah, it is really like rapid fire with the mission. So we just got that one done, and then it like auto starts the next one. This is where, uh, yeah, those kind of pacing issues they kind of come back up, not horribly, um, but it is like boom, boom, boom. 
But it makes sense. Like, contextually with the story, this isn't an instance where you'd want, you know, the player to just dilly-daddle. Like, it's a, a high-states kind of affair. But it is, it is kind of funny that the mission structure, instead of it being just one long mission, um, they broke it up into, all right, you finish this one immediately, like, auto-start this one. Ow, I died. Are you kidding me? I didn't even notice her health bar. <laughs> Maybe uh, don't get dragged into combat. It's not that hard. No, nope, they uh, they immediately turn back around. They're like, yeah, let's get in there. <laughs> Alright, well, they fared much better this time. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe they got pushed in the water? Because I refuse to believe that they got wailed on so hard that they died. I'll have to go back in the VOD and look at that. <laughs> I'm curious what happened. Go, take him down. Eccolo, there, there. Oh, sorry. Katarina did not mean to smack you there. Oh, she smacked me back. It's all right. And I love when it gets down to like the last one or two enemies and everyone like gangs up on them. Ow. Though it does lead to a, a few friendly fire cases like uh, where you just smacked me. <laughs> Alright, we got these guards watching the Codex page, which I might take advantage of them. Yeah. Alright, let me... We'll kill these guys real quick. Also, you guys are just dropping out of nowhere. Take care of you real quick. Take care of him. Alright, he doesn't want it. Let me come in here, grab this codex page, just because I can. I don't need them all. Again, this is a play file where uh, I don't, I'm not going for the 100% completion. Uh, just because I have one where I'm already really close to that. All I need to do is get the feathers. Um, but uh, if I see it, I'll grab it. The same as with the uh, Assassin's Creed 2, or uh, Assassin's Creed 1 session that we did. All right, should be getting close. We're in these back alleys now, and there aren't as many enemies. Oh, never mind. Take it back. They're all right behind me. Oh, they've they've got us. They got us surrounded now. Well, we're making quick work of them, so uh. That's good. How are the uh, ally health bars looking? That's fine. Yeah, they're they're all right. So yeah, they had to have fallen in the water. If um, we've had this many enemy encounters and they're still like half health. Oh no, it's an ambush. You could have seen that coming. Alright, no one was really coming for me. Hey, big fella. Same team. I, I love those backstabs so much. <laughs> Ooh, he really wailed on him. Then uh, I think this is gonna be another like kind of rapid fire 
like cutscene's gonna play and then it'll be another mission start. Where are Bianca and Ottaviano? Forgive me, Signora. They were playing outside when the attack began. I don't know where they are. Reinforcements from the mountains! They are breaching the citadel! Ezio, don't let those bastardi get in here! With me! Oh, and yep. Yep. So, uh, it's another one of those rapid fire, like, mission ends, cutscene, next mission. And this whole sequence is pretty rapid fire like that. And I'm trying to think if this was in the base game or not. That's where I'm, I'm having trouble. Because now I don't know. It's been so long since I played the, uh, the 360 version of the game that I have where I don't have the DLC. That, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't remember. Hmm. Also, Chewy, it's kind of hard to reach over you to grab my water bottle. That's a lot of broken angles. Uh, angles? Ankles. <laughs> there we go. Like, you don't jump from that height and not break something. <laughs> I didn't see him tuck and roll. There wasn't a foam pad for them to land on. All right, yeah, Katarina, come come help out. I'm... In the time it took you to kill the one, I've taken out late six. Also, how did her health get so low? Is that one guy? Wow. So where is uh, Niccolo Machiavelli in this whole situation? <laughs> I haven't seen him this whole time. He's got full health, so he's certainly doing all right for himself. Man, they just keep coming. Oh, no, never mind. Ten attackers. I love when uh, the character models or uh, characters that aren't Ezio do uh, like the assassination um, jumps and all that. Like Machiavelli, uh, don't know if everyone else saw it, but in the background there, <laughs> he uh, he did the pull up my uh, throwing knife real quick. No, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll shoot you. Um, but uh, he he did the the uh, air assassination, which again it's just it's always so funny uh, seeing non robe wearing uh, or Ezio in this case uh, character models in the game doing that. <laughs> but if Katarina just whipped out the the like hidden blade air assassination, that would be something. Speaking of Katarina, like, <laughs> don't push her over like that. <laughs> oh, finally, um, not a, uh, not a rapid fire mission. You know, let's get healed up. You know, let's, we'll loot a couple people. Maybe one will have a medicine ball, so we don't have to buy one. Hey, there we go. What did, what did I say? First one. Fantastic. Alright, Katarina. What uh what you got for me? What's up? Lay it on me. Katerina! Katerina Sforza! I know you're in there. I have something you may want back. Are you missing any children? And No, not the children. What a pleasant surprise. I take it you would be the Orsi brothers. Ludovico. And Gecko, 
At your service. Basta! Where are my children? Let them go! Of course, Signora. We'll happily give them back for something of yours. A certain map and a certain apple, brother. See, a certain apple indeed. Or shall I slice your baby's necks ear to ear? Bastardi! You think you can threaten me? I'll give you nothing! You want my children? Take them! I have the instrument to make more! When you change your okay. mind, you'll be on the bridge <laughs> outside the city! You have one hour! Katerina, no. I can't ask you to sacrifice your children. Nobody yeah, it's like anyone. wild, Katerina. Like, damn. No hesitation. <laughs> you have my word. The apple needs to remain in the citadel. Keep this safe. And now to go rescue some kids. Oh, I have 10 minutes to do it? Okay, well. Just for speed running this. Also, I like that the uh, city, yeah, we we held off at the Citadel, but they took the city. So that's why, like, their forces are patrolling and everything. It is effectively theirs. Uh, there aren't a lot on the rooftop, so I could climb up and I'd be fine. Which I should probably do here. Isn't that no, you don't you don't know who I am. You've never seen me in your life. You have no idea who I am. This is a case of mistaken identity, my friend. I do have nine minutes to save these kids, so I need to try and speed this up. Where are you going? Yeah, where were you going? <laughs> Your plan did not pan out, my guy. Also, am I going to land in some water? I am. Alright, later, fellas. That's you know, the Olympic swimmer over here. Get, uh, get him over there. And are they both in the same place, or am I getting to this spot, and then after I clear it, the second one will show? Eh... Uh. Can't remember. Alright, I got my hidden blades ready. Are you the only one up here? Hey, bud. What's up? Howdy. Aw, oh, man, I was supposed to stab them both. I messed up there. Whoops. Hey, right, let me get my sword. Thanks, fellas. Alright, carry on. Where were you? Oh, no, not you. You're very obnoxious. Let me let me try and get around you. No? Okay. Christ. Uh, you know what? Hey, on second thought, let me let me smoke bomb real quick. Not, not, yeah, throw bomb. There we go. This will make this a lot smoother. Just hold still. Hold still. Thank you. Yeah, you guys run off. Go along now. Not interested. Holding him at the lighthouse. Let me hop on this horse in. And, uh, okay, I do vaguely remember this from the base game. So, yeah, these missions were kind of base game. And I think this is where my, uh, my kind of gripes with the pacing kind of stem from. Was, uh, these missions here. Particularly the ones that we just wrapped up where it was, like, rapid fire. 
uh, you finish it, cutscene, next mission. Like, no time to breathe. But I, uh, I did excuse it while going over that breakdown, so I, I think that's something that I understand now that I didn't understand whenever I initially played uh, back on back on 360. Also, guys, I'm trying to climb here. Can you can you hold off a second? Yeah, no, no. no. Hey, hey, guys, come. On. All right, chill. I have five minutes to get up this tower. I don't have time to fight all of you. Oh, especially you, Mr. Pipe fella. Here, come here. No, this is not how I wanted this to go. Alright, hey. Oh, this is just not not working out. Okay, thank you. Now, hey, hey, stop. 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 <laughs> and uh, give me just a second, Jim Rooney. I'll get caught up on chat in uh, just a second. I'm trying to get past these obnoxious. Fucking guards. Good grief. Okay, pausing for a second. <laughs> Sintra ruins are looking real different all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the Tomberries here are... They ain't shit. They're annoying, but they ain't shit. But don't throw rocks at me, fellas. I got, I have five minutes to to save a kid now. Come on, stop. Yeah, climb down, so that I can climb up. That's how it works. No, stop, good gravy. All right. No, you know what? No, I'm not doing this. No, stop. Quit it. For fuck's sake. Alright, you know what? No, kill me. Just kill me. I'm not dealing with this. Yep, thank you. <laughs> that was so obnoxious. <laughs> oh, inspired. Plans to curl. Yeah, kind of. Uh, but I mean, hey, I'm on Xbox. What am I going to do? Also, the, uh, like, Assassin's Creed 2, the controls are, like, semi-jank anyway. Um, it's not as, uh, smooth with the parkour and movement as, uh, I, like, kind of remembered it, uh, first time I played it back on 360. So this is the, uh, this is the Ezio Collection kind of remastered trilogy. And, um, yeah, they don't really change any of the controls. Because it's uh, just a straight port. Why would they? Um, yeah, let me jump over. One of the issues I had was I, I drew too many guards as well. Um, damn it. Did it again. Oh, actually, no, we're doing fine. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, no. Me up here. Over here. Alright. You. Stop. Yep. Yeah. Alright, I think we got it now. Yeah, we're in business. Italian Tomberries? Yeah, yeah, that they are. No, don't throw rocks at me! Oh, you bastard! Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, now we're back in this pickle again. Not having a good time. This is one of those cases where, like, yeah, I'm bad at the game, but also, like, the game's just bad <laughs> with the uh, with the controls going on here. Oh, I might have might have gotten a lucky break. Yeah, I might have a lucky break here. Yeah, there we go. This is what we wanted. Also got an ad break coming up. Oh, actually, we're in the midst of the ad break. Never mind. Oops. It was a little slow getting the uh, getting the update out there. All right, I got three minutes. That's fine. Your last chance, Katarina. The apple now. Uh, no, heal. There we go. Are you gonna break the boy's legs? I don't think so. Uh, where's the? There we go. Yeah, that's one of the Orsi brothers taken care of. 
Or are you the fool, dying for a handful of change? Was it worth it? More than you know. The maestro gains his prize because of me. Vuori col tuo orgoglio, per quanto vale. Reguiescat in pace. All right, and got the uh, got the kiddo saved. Yeah, don't mention it. And uh, where is our next mission? Do we have to go back? No, I don't care about Ottaviano Riario. That's that's not who. That's not what I'm here for. I am here for my next mission. Get that marked. And uh, is this a synchronization point that I've gotten? Yes. All right. Uh, nice of the game to make us incognito again. So I guess the whole occupation of the city is over. Uh, question mark. <laughs> or maybe they took control of it back while uh while I was out saving the kids. I actually can't remember. And uh, welcome back, everyone. Sorry about that ad break. Usually I like to give a uh, little forewarning for those hit, but uh, that one I missed. Man, that's a, that's a jumpy horse. And then uh, we can go ahead and dismount here. So we're back in the city limits. Yep, thanks for the money. Have a good one. Speaking of uh, Mamma Mia, back to what uh, Jim, you had said there. Uh, now, I've seen Mamma Mia with Pierce Brosnan and uh, who's it, Bill Murray? Was it Bill Murray? Is like the other dad character that... I'm saying that's like you've probably... Like you've seen Mamma Mia. I doubt you've seen Mamma Mia. I can't say I recommend it. A bit. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> uh, Mamma Mia, here we go again. I haven't seen that one. I don't know if I ever will. What are you doing out here? I'm so sorry. I but uh, yeah, you saying that made me I'm think so of that. Sorry. What happened? It was a trick. Lower our uh, it's just kind of outskirts so because of all the water. Yeah, it's very swampy. It's not the worst. Uh, I kind of remembered a lot of it being. Uh, no, where is he? I remembered it being um. Uh, like deeper water in areas. But no, like the the shallows, are just a swampy part of it. It's not not too bad. Uh, certainly could be better. It's a very boring kind of landscape. It's not my favorite map out of the out of Assassin's Creed 2. That would definitely go to um. That would definitely go to uh Venice and Florence. Those two are just so well constructed and like I can navigate without needing the mini map and everything. Um. But uh. Yeah, like, Tuscany is alright. And then, uh... Romagna, wherever we are now. Yeah, just... Not not it. It ain't it. Drink some water real quick. Oh, and we're full on Notorious now. Okay. Hey, you don't see me. I'm drinking water. I'm walking away. Uh, that's a, that's a whole ass army. <laughs> Let me get up on a rooftop. Maybe, maybe we'll go that route. If I could climb. There we are. And jump over. Grab a chest that somehow I missed. Gimme. And now, sneak over and around. What are we doing? Killing the other brother here? Is that right? Go into uh, Eagle Vision. What is that? Oh, it's a hay bale. 
It was obscured by the tree. Back in the Edel Vision. Oh, yeah, there he is. Hey, you, walk back by. You give him a second, he'll walk back by. Are you asking for doing side quest? We are in the, like, kind of start of the DLC segment of Assassin's Creed 2. Um, right before you get into the uh, Bonfire of the Vanities. Alright, got him taken out. He's still got uh, three, four guards. Yep, four. Yep, four. Five, counting the one on the roof. <laughs> Which I will take him out next, I think, once he gets turned around. Yeah, there we go. Oh, he uh, spotted me. That wasn't supposed to happen. I think we're supposed to run him down for horse here. Yeah, we'll just uh we'll chase him on foot. This is fine. Ow. Damn it. Alright, later fool. Alright, now I'm just gonna run him down for horse. Uh if I can get on it. There we go. Forget that we get a full on gallop. Oh shit. Jumped a little too soon there. Get our next horse. <laughs> or is he made it to the uh, end of his path and now it's just a. Uh, oh, okay. Well, if I just ignore everybody and wail on him, that should take care of all those. Hey, fellas, this is all a big misunderstanding. Let me take you out. Oh, big fella, big fella, big fella. Hey, stop. You. Yoink. Alright, let me heal. Yeah, it's just him and the, uh, the big guys now. I should be able to avoid them. If I can time my counters right. Shit, yeah, they work together all right. They sandwiched me. <laughs> Heals. Uh, now we got an archer? Yeah, no thanks. Let me, uh, let me just whip out my... Yeah, take care of this real quick. Good night. Gotta love the smoke bombs. They're your, uh, like, get out of jail free card, make you everything easy. Don't <laughs> one stop shop, kind of cheat. <laughs> so much bloodshed. <clears throat> A prize of such value. It will not remain yours for long. We shall see. Che miseria nascono dalla vidita. That's a uh, that's the first target that we've had where we've like killed them within this whole sequence, I think. Touche. Right, and yeah, now I think it jumps immediately into uh kinda after this cutscene, Bonfire of the Vanities. Because I think this ended the, uh... Actually, wait. No, I don't remember. Oh, is it really easier to take out the, uh... The armored boys with the, uh... With the hidden blade rather than the sword? Huh. God you're back with us. Are you all right? See, my timing with the hidden blade in most cases is awful, so that's why I tend to use the sword. 
next to Pick. I'll have to try that next time I'm uh, fighting up big fellas. Let that remember. Wait. There was a third man. He took the apple. Who? Also, Ezio looks like he aged like 20 years in two days. <laughs> <laughs> in a, in this cutscene. See, si. Katarina, I have to go right away. Of course. Then you will need this as well. The map Nicolo spoke of. Your husband. Ex-husband, mio caro. He swore he'd uncovered the locations of all the Codex pages. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out where the kind of Assassin's Creed 2 base game ends and the DLC yeah. begins. There is an abbey in the wetlands near here. Because I remember playing the Ezio Collection version of the game for the first time, and I was thrown off uh, because uh, because the the DLC is included. And like I said, like way back, I never had the DLC on the 360 version. Um, this is all like brand new to me. So my like trying to figure out the base game story. <laughs> is is uh is fuzzy at best. Cuz I don't think it ends here. I, I I don't think the base game ended here. Maybe the base game already ended. Uh in like we just finished one of the DLC cuz I think Assassin's Creed 2 had two DLCs. It had this one which was uh Romagno or wherever we are. And then the other one was Bonfire of the Vanities. And then after that, then you play that final sequence. Don't quote me on it, but I think that's how it was. Because all these missions are marked as, like, restored memories. Um, which the, the, like, the main quest line from the uh, base game, of course, it doesn't have that same distinction. So yeah, I think this was one DLC, and then Bonfire was another one, and then after that, yeah, Rodrigo. And how are we on time? Okay, two and a half hours, not bad. Uh, where's this mission? There it is. It's blending in with the white void there. No, you know what? I'll, I'll abide. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been on the roof. You're right. My apologies. Take care. You need to run this way. Yeah, there's gates right there. Uh, never mind. Gates not right there. But actually, yeah, there is one. I'll just swim under. And take a boat across. Uh, can I not get the boat through there? Okay, I guess not. Oh, that would be why. That's uh, shallow water. Deceptively shallow water. And grab this chest, don't mind if I do. And got our mission marker right here. Look for the guy in the black robe at the abbey with a lot of dudes in black robes. Sounds about right. And Eagle Vision doesn't help us here. Nice. Where does it? You know, I... 
keep forgetting that contextual camera is a thing. I never use it. <laughs> Same here. I'm trying to think, do I just walk up to the door here? I think I do. Wait until those guards turn around. Yep. And... No? Uh... Here we go. Blessings on you, brother. Grazie. I wonder if you can help me. What do you see? A monk in black robes who lacks one of his ten fingers. Well, Brother Guido has only nine toes. You sure it wasn't a toe? Quite sure. And then there's Brother Domenico, but it's his entire left arm he's lacking. Again, quite sure it was a finger. Hmm. Now wait a moment. I do recall a black-robed monk with nine fingers. Yes, of course. When we had our last San Vincenzo's feast at the Abbey. Yes, I know the place. I'll try there. Grazie. Go in peace, brother. I always do. Why has it got to be nine fingers? Why can't it be like, I don't know, eleven? Get a get a Prince's Bride reference in there. That'd be nice. Anyway. Get away from that restricted area. Have a little wade through the swamp here. Lovely. And uh do we have a horse nearby? That'd be swell. Not seeing any horses. Nope. Not a horse in sight. And uh, maybe we'll get this DLC uh, kind of segment taken care of. And then we'll save the Bonfire of the Vanities and the final mission there for uh, one final stream. But uh, we'll see. Let me see how I'm feeling once... Uh, once you get this done. Also, I think it'll be easier just to swim back under. Isn't that they're in town? Are they in the town? Let me check before I go in there. Good grief! The uh, frame rate whenever you enter the map. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So go into the town. How are we doing on cash? Oh, pretty good. Um, 27,000. If I wait a little bit longer, I should be able to buy the uh, Sword of Altair, which I'm surprised, again, that I uh, hadn't already bought it. Which I think you can only buy it from the uh, from the villa. Excuse me, brother. Am I supposed to? I wonder oh. if you can. Uh, unholy demon! Get away! What's wrong? You're the one who killed Brother Stefano. Brothers, the killer of monks has returned. Uh. Oh, I just gotta tackle people. Okay. Oh, and first try. Nice. Please, no. I don't want to die. I only kill those who kill others. Your brother Stefano was a killer. I'm sure you are no such thing. Now, listen to me. I'm looking for a black-robed monk who's missing a finger. Missing a finger, you say? Do you mean, like, Fra Savonarola? Savonarola? Who is this? You know him? I did. He was one of us, for a time. And then? We suggested he retire to a hermitage for a good long time. I'm afraid to say his retreat has come to an end. Also, uh, with this DLC, uh, just something I've noticed, um, the, the like, cutscene work, it's ever so slightly, like, directed differently, I guess. Like, shot placement feels different from a base game. And that wrapped that mission? Oh, sure did. And sequence 12 complete? Nice. Okay. 
And then I think this is putting us into the Bonfire of the Vanities DLC. Which is like another... Gosh, I feel like it's another hour of gameplay. Why don't you try opening it? So 1497, this is like almost 10 years since that last mission uh, in, uh, in Venice. Actually, wait, no, decline. I'm going to look up real quick. How long is the Bonfire of the Banities DLC? Yeah, it's showing here um, for the Bonfire of the Vanities DLC, it's showing on average on uh, HowLongToBeat.com uh, like an hour and 54 minutes. So if it's almost another two hours, um, that's a, uh, wow, that's something. And it's a good DLC. Uh, it's It's not bad at all. But, uh, yeah, that Forley, Battle of Forley, that's about an hour. And then, yeah, two hours for Bonfire of the Vanities. So I think we'll cut it right there. That, that feels like a good stopping point. If, especially if this next DLC is another two hours on top of the uh, the final story mission out of the base game. Um, so let me kind of kind of roll into the outro kind of stuff here. Uh, first off, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're close to finished, so not this session, but the next one, we'll, we'll wrap it up. And, uh, for now, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, that's at Chewy Coffee. And anytime I go live over on Twitter, I, uh, post and let folks know. And, um, also if you're not following me here on Twitch, that's twitch.tv slash Chewy Coffee, you get a guaranteed three streams a week. Mondays like today are for Assassin's Creed. Uh, this Wednesday is going to be a Wednesday Mumsday Chewy Coffee show. For those that are new, that's like a weekly, well, bi-weekly uh, recap where I go over what I've been up to, kind of life events, stuff like that. And uh, this one coming up, it's uh, kind of an important one. Um, quite, a, quite a few changes coming, and uh, we'll talk about that Wednesday. Uh, tomorrow we might have a stream. Not not 100% sure, but the next guaranteed stream course is Final Fantasy Friday. We'll be playing some more Final Fantasy VIII. I got some uh, off-screen streaming, uh, off-stream leveling and stuff to do. Goodness, I seriously can't talk today. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'll, I'll get all that done before Friday. Um, and uh, we'll have another fun, great session with that. Uh, then probably during that Wednesday, Wednesday show, I'll we'll talk about uh, next week. Because uh, the stream schedule will be a little bit different, um, understandably, with uh, Thanksgiving holidays coming up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, without further ado, I've been Chewy Coffee. You guys have been great. And uh, let's see if we got anyone we can raid. What have we got here? No, not my goals. I hit the wrong tab. Raids. We got, uh, we got Kobez playing some Minecraft, and we also got Cinnamon Buns playing uh, Bioshock. Who are we thinking, folks? You want to go raid a Bioshocker or a Minecrafter? Bioshock? Yeah, I'm feeling Bioshock. Yeah, let's go. Let's go raid Cinnamon Buns. Here we go. Get those axes sharpened. Get ready. Get a coffee raid. Take care, everyone. See you in the next one.